Today, I'm going to explain the simple system that you can use to lose two pounds a week without even really trying. But before we get into it, you need to recognize what two pounds of fat even looks like, because I think it's going to surprise you. This right here is what one pound of body fat looks like. Pretty big, isn't it? So if I was to say to you that in this video, I can show you how to lose two of these every single week, hopefully I've got your attention. So let's get into it. First and foremost, the most important thing for you to know is that if you wanna lose two pounds of fat per week, you are going to need to be in a 1000 calorie deficit per day. Or another way of looking at it is that you're gonna to need to be in a 7000 calorie deficit per week. But if you've never heard what a calorie deficit is and you're new to this terminology, let me quickly explain to you. So every single person has what we call a maintenance calorie number. And that maintenance calorie number is based on your physiology and your lifestyle. So it's based on your age, your weight, your height, your sex, and how active your life is day to day. Now I'm a personal trainer and a nutritionist. So when I work with my clients one-to-one, -one, I use a pretty complex formula and algorithm to calculate their precise maintenance calorie number. But if you want to calculate your maintenance calories in the next 10 seconds, you can use this very straightforward equation. Take your body weight in pounds, make sure it's in pounds and not in kilos, and multiply it by 14. Now, as I say, that's a relatively rough equation, but it's going to give you a great start point. And as the name would suggest, your maintenance calories is the number of calories that you need just to stay the same, just to maintain your current existence, your current weight, your current levels of body fat. But we don't want that, do we? We want to lose two pounds per week. So to do that, we need to create a calorie deficit where we are consuming fewer calories than we are burning. And by doing that, it forces our body to burn the stored energy, the fat cells, as fuel. Now, there are 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. This is one pound of fat. But you want to be burning two of these every single week. And that's why we need to create a 7,000 calorie deficit per week or in other words, a 1,000 calorie deficit per day. But at this stage, most people make a critical mistake. They try to create that 1,000 calorie deficit per day purely through restricting their food. In other words, they will eat 1,000 calories less per day. But let's be honest, that isn't going to be fun for anybody. So what I'd suggest you do is eating 500 calories less and moving 500 calories more. So what we've done there is we've actually increased your maintenance calories by 500 because you are now living a more active lifestyle, and you are eating 500 calories less, which means we've created that a 1000 calorie deficit per day. So what does eating 500 calories less per day look like? Well, honestly, it really isn't that tough if you put your mind to it. And again, I wouldn't do this through one strategy. First and foremost, you're going to want to be more mindful of the food that you are consuming, both the quantity and the quality. And the best way to do that is to start tracking your food if you aren't already. And the best app to do that with is MyFitnessPal. And don't get conned into thinking that you need the premium version. The free version is more than enough for you. If you've never tracked your food before, I'm not going to lie to you, it is going to be a little bit of a hassle at first. But after three to five days, I promise you, it will start to get easier, a little bit like starting anything. And this is a fantastic habit to get in because it helps you build a level of awareness of the food that you're eating. And don't worry, a lot of people, when they start tracking their food or what puts them off, I should say, is that they think tracking food is going to be a life sentence, that they're going to have to do it for the rest of their life. And it couldn't be further from the truth. Most of my clients do it for six to 12 weeks, depending on sort of how diligent they are with it. And then they never have to do it again for the rest of their life because they start to build up an ability, a super bout really, of being able to eyeball a plate, eyeball a meal, and pretty accurately estimate the calories and the macros within that meal. What you're also going to want to do is prioritize protein and fiber, ideally at every meal in the day. And the main reason that this is going to help you to create that calorie deficit is that protein and fiber fill you up. And that helps to keep your hunger at bay. What I'd also do, particularly in the first three to five days when you first start tracking your calories, is just treat that time as a bit of an audit. You don't necessarily need to overhaul the food that you're eating in the first couple of days, but I would use it as a chance to just look honestly at the data at what you're actually eating. Where are you getting your calories from? And then mentally in your head, go through all the food that you've eaten and put it into a traffic light system. Green for as much as you want, amber for probably should limit this and red for I need to cut this out completely. And then just do that, implement that. Cut out the stuff that is in the red, limit the stuff that's in the amber and go all in on the stuff that's in the green. There's no exact science to this because there could be stuff that would be on one person's red list that would be in another person's amber list. 
what I would encourage you to do is eat 80% for function and 20% for fun. So if you know that there is something that is not going to help you to hit your calorie deficit, but you absolutely love it, I would still keep it in. Because one of the biggest things, one of the most important factors, if not the most important factor when it comes to sort of adhering to someone's diet is their ability to sustain it because Rome wasn't built in a day and you're not going to lose 10 pounds overnight. So if having that one bad snack is going to help you to maintain a 1000 calorie deficit per day, keep it in. But this is where honesty and discipline comes in. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to be disciplined with this stuff because I can give you all the information, but you have to do the work. Another great tip I'll give you is that you want to limit the amount of calories that you're getting from liquids. So we're talking alcohol. That's a pretty obvious one. Sugary drinks, another pretty obvious one. But the other one that a lot of people don't realize has as many calories that it does in it is things like Starbucks or Cafe Nero or Costa. Some of these coffees have three to 500 calories in them. I started working with one client back in November and he was doing everything. He already had another personal trainer. He was training four days a week in the gym. He was walking a fair amount. He was being pretty controlled with his food and he just could not lose any weight. But he'd never tracked his calories, so I encouraged him to do that, and he listened to me, and he started doing it. Two days in, in fact, it might have even been one day in, he messaged me, very excited. Doug, I figured it out. I was like, oh, what? what is it? Turns out he was having 600 calories a day from Starbucks. He had no idea. So almost overnight, his value system shifted. He enjoyed that Starbucks, but he no longer valued it because it was more important for him to lose the body fat and lose the weight. So all he did was swap out the two 300 calorie Starbucks that he was having every single day for two black Americanos that basically had zero calories in it. And now he saved himself 600 calories per day. And there's probably a lot of people watching this who could do the exact same thing. And then what you wanna be doing is finding tasty, low calorie, nutrient dense meals that are quick and easy for you to prepare. Now, of course, this is gonna vary for absolutely everybody depending on what you enjoy. But a couple of really good examples that I personally use, literally get a pan, fry some mints, throw three eggs in, put some spinach in, cook up some rice and you are done. The whole thing takes less than 10 minutes, packed full of protein, really fills you up, a nice balanced diet with fats, protein and carbs, probably less than 500 calories, takes 10 minutes to make and it fills you up. That's the most important thing. As I say, don't take that as gospel. That's just one example. And last but certainly not least, stay hydrated. Most people don't realize that when they are reaching for food, they're not actually that hungry. They're probably just bored. I would rather you fill your stomach with this stuff, zero calories, and it acts like a secondary energy system for you than empty calories from sweets or sugary snacks. Water acts like a secondary energy system for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, it prevents you from getting dehydrated. And a lot of people don't really understand dehydration, but if your brain is just one or 2% dehydrated, it starts to shut systems down in your body that it sees as non-essential. And this is why a lot of people go through the day feeling very lethargic. It's because they are dehydrated, it's because they've not drunk enough water. The other reason that water is so powerful is that it oxygenates cells. Remember, H2O is the chemical makeup of water, hydrogen and oxygen. And our cells, particularly our muscles, need oxygen to contract. And I'm not just talking about the biceps or the chest or anything like that. I'm talking about all of the cells, the trillions of cells in your body, they all need oxygen. But in this context, as I say, the biggest benefit of water is that it physically fills your stomach. Because more often than not, particularly when you're in a calorie deficit, you are going to think that you are hungry because you're going to be thinking about food more. Chances are though, you're not hungry, you're just bored. Fill your stomach with water, it's zero calories, and it's gonna help you out. Okay, so that's what eating 500 calories less looks like. Now let's talk about what burning 500 calories more looks like. Well, this is very straightforward. First and foremost, you're going to want to commit to going for a walk for 60 minutes, one hour every single day. This is a very low friction task that absolutely everybody who is serious about losing two pounds a week without really trying that hard can commit to doing. A lot of people are put off by the idea of losing weight and procrastinate on it for weeks, if not months or even years because they think it's gonna involve lots of long, boring cardio, like going for runs or rowing or cycling, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Sure, high intensity cardio is obviously going to help you to burn calories, but I'd argue it's not that sustainable for the vast majority of people. Now, of course, if you absolutely love that particular form of cardio, whether it is running, rowing or cycling, then keep going, crack on, take your precautions to make sure you don't get injured. 
But the vast majority of people don't love that stuff. And I don't blame them because I get it. I don't like it either. It sucks. I hate it. But you don't need to be doing this stuff to burn the calories. And you certainly don't need to be doing this stuff to lose two pounds per week. But what you can do that I would argue is going to be far more effective because it is more sustainable is committing to walking 60 minutes per day. That's going to help you burn anything between 400 to 600 calories per day, depending on how fast you're walking and your physiology. The bigger the person you are, the more calories that you are going to burn. And that goes for any form of exercise, by the way, not just walking. But on average, if you're walking about 60 minutes per day, you're going to be burning anything from 400 to 600 calories. Now, if you multiply that by seven, seven days in a week, you're going to burn anything from 2,800 to 4,200 calories per week just from walking. And bear in mind that we're trying to create a 7,000 calorie deficit in any given week. You're pretty much halfway there, if not more than halfway there already just from walking. And just from walking an hour a day. And the best part about walking is that you can multitask whilst you are doing it. You can call loved ones. You can take work calls. You can get your kids out and about. You can walk the dog. You can listen to a podcast, an audio book, or a new playlist. And of course, the other great benefit of walking regularly is that it's going to get you outside, breathing fresh air, sunlight, and daylight are so underrated, guys, particularly in this day and age. But what I think is the coolest thing about walking that most people don't know is that it activates a part of your nervous system called your parasympathetic nervous system. And this is the part of your brain that is linked to rest, relaxation, and restoration. So in other words, walking is scientifically proven to help you to relax and reset. And then the other thing that I would be doing if I wanted to lose two pounds per week, so I'd be getting in the gym and lifting weights three times a week for 45 minutes per session. Now, again, I don't think that is too much to ask. You have 168 hours in your week. And if you are doing three 45-minute sessions per week, that's only two and a half hours. That's less than 3% of your entire week. And when you frame it like that, when you put it in that perspective, hopefully you can agree that that is more than manageable. But specifically, when you're in the gym, what I want you to focus on is compound movements. These are the multi-joint, multi-muscle exercises that also tend to use the biggest muscles in your body. Your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, your chest, your lats, and your rhomboids. And the reason I want you to focus on that is because the bigger the muscle, the bigger the contraction. The bigger the contraction, the more oxygen that is required. The more oxygen that is required, the harder your lungs have to work to breathe in the oxygen. And then the harder your heart has to work to pump the oxygen in your blood to that muscle. In other words, the more metabolic the entire process is and the more metabolic the process is, the harder your body has to work and the more calories you are going to burn. So in other words, if we do compound movements, we are going to make your exercises, your workouts far more efficient. So I want you to focus on squats, deadlifts, lunges, good mornings, chest presses, overhead press, lat pull downs, pull ups, push ups, dips, or anything else like that that is going to use those big muscles. And last but not least, guys, you need to understand the power of consistency because you can do all of this for one day or one week and nothing really is going to change. Sure, you're going to set yourself on the right trajectory. You might lose two, maybe even three pounds in that first week, but then you need to rinse and repeat that. So, like I said right at the beginning, you need to come up with a sustainable routine that suits you and your lifestyle. But as long as you follow, the principles that I've laid out today of how to burn 500 calories more and how to eat 500 calories less in a day, then you should be able to lose two pounds a week without even really trying that hard. Make sure that you're accountable, not only to yourself, but to other people. So tell people about the mission that you're on and come up with a reason as to why you're doing it, an intrinsically driven and motivating factor. And then measure your progress, weigh yourself regularly, but also take progress photos and check out how your clothes are fitting and celebrate milestones. Every time you lose two pounds, pat yourself on the back. I absolutely love talking about this topic, guys, and I could go on and on for hours, but I will leave it here because hopefully I've given you enough to get started. If you found this video useful and insightful, then I'd absolutely love it if you could show your support and smash the thumbs up button. And of course, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the next video. And until the next one, bye.